Hi there. Welcome to the first in a series of three videos trying to find good microphones for bad recording environments. Part of the rationale for coming up with these videos is I record with my head in a box, otherwise known as recording with an isobox too, uh, because it looks nice from the outside and uh, it's permanently on display in my flat, which I'm trying to sell. Um, I wish I had a booth. <laughs> anyway, so in this video, I am going to be running through four microphones, three that we're testing against the baseline of the TLM 102, which is my day to day microphone. So I have set these all up with the same methodology. I've set peaks when recording to be between minus 20 decibels and minus 12 decibels, uh, depending on the volume at which I'm speaking. Uh, and I have then run through 20 sentences, which last between one and nine words, to run through character voices, sibilance, plosives, proximity effect, shouting, whispering, etc. Uh, I have normalised the test audio to make sure that uh, everything is being compared at the same volume per sentence. Uh, but other than that, there is no audio processing, there is no editing, there are not even any second takes, so if you hear a mistake, I have left it in. Just before we start, I want to run through, uh, for anyone who isn't already familiar, a couple of things about polar patterns. So most of us will record with the stereotypical cardioid polar pattern, which looks like what is going on screen just now. But the problem is, in a poor recording environment, that is going to capture all the sound from the sides, all the echoes that we don't particularly want in our audio. Sure, we can take a lot of that away with processing, but for certain things, such as character auditions, we need to be supplying raw audio. And frankly, any time your raw audio is better, it is easier for the audio engineer, and it's always better to fix problems at the source. So the solution for that is to use either a supercardioid microphone, which looks like this, or a hypercardioid microphone, which looks like this. As you can see, they do capture a bit of sound at the back, but they capture significantly less of the sound towards the kind of the front side sections. Alternatively, we can use a shotgun microphone, and the truest shotgun microphones have a polar pattern called the low bar polar pattern. As you can see, it records quite a bit at the back. Um, so generally, we try and put nothing behind the microphone, uh, a little bit at the sides and more at the front. But what I will say is this is a bit idealized, shall we say? Um, the lower frequency one is working in, the more microphones tend towards the cardioid shape. Um, I have a fairly deep voice, um, and uh, this does kind of counter uh, counter a lot of the benefits of using a shotgun microphone, certainly in, in this sort of recording environments. So just to run through a little bit about the four microphones, the three I'm testing and my everyday baseline. First up is the Neumann TLM 102. Um, this is the frequency curve for the microphone. It's got a well-controlled bass, but the roll-off starts quite low. So uh, typically when EQing, it uses a little bit of extra EQ, a low shelf or similar. As you can see at the top, it's got a nice boost to the clarity area at the slight risk of increasing sibilance. And there is just this one slightly odd dip in the curve, which for raw audio can slightly impact how clear the voice is, but not significantly so. Uh, the microphone's got a low self noise, it's got a 12 dBA, and unsurprisingly, that meant getting a noise floor below 60 wasn't too difficult. Uh, I hit a noise floor of minus 66 in the raw recording of these examples. If you're in the market for it, it costs uh, 544 no, 554 pounds from Gear for Music, see the link below, or $750 from Amazon US. The second microphone is the Sennheiser MKH416. If we look at the frequency response, it is extraordinarily similar to the TLM 102. A bit less at the bottom end and a smoother lift for clarity at the top end. Um, 
It also does tend to need a little bit of extra EQ at the bottom end, but it's it's pretty ideal as microphones go. There's a reason why this is an industry standard. Um, while it has got fractionally higher self noise than the 102, it's got 13 rather than two uh, rather than 12. Um, because it is a shotgun mic, it is easier to get a lower noise floor, and I had a noise noise floor that um, went never went above 68 in this recording. Um, I tend not to use this microphone at home. It's uh, too big. Uh, it, it's frankly, it's far too big, as you'll see, uh, for an Isobox 2. You can see it sticking out in the demo. I'll be sitting quite far back. Um, but it is my go-to microphone for my travel uh, studio. Um, it is expensive. £839 from Amazon UK, $989 from Amazon US, which actually is quite a lot cheaper than the exchange rate would suggest. Um, but they are prolific secondhand, although you do need to be careful and look out for fakes. Uh, so I got mine much cheaper. I paid £321 for the T version of the microphone, plus about £80 for an adapter uh, to run it on Phantom Power instead, and uh, £370 for the P48. Um, so uh, both of them for less than the cost of a new one. And just so you can see it, I recorded uh, on the P48 version. Here it is. This is the microphone that I recorded the demos on. The second microphone test, or the third microphone overall, is the Deity S Mic 3S. Uh, this thing's tiny. It weighs 44 grams. It is ridiculous. Looking at the frequency response now, uh, as you can see, like the others, there's a pretty flat curve. It's a different microphone dropping on the floor. Um, a pretty flat curve. Uh, the drop at the top end makes it likely to sound a little less clear when raw. Uh, and that dip above 200 uh, hertz could be a bit of a problem for my uh, deeper voice. Um, that bump at the bottom end is also a bit of a problem and certainly would be better EQ'd out. Um, but it does mean that for raw auditions, this could potentially be less than ideal, but we'll see with the tests. Um, that said, it is. The size of a, of, a, of a small dynamic condenser, it completes against shotguns that are twice the size and four times the weight. It also has 12 decibels alpha weighted of self-noise, and I got a noise floor between uh, 64 and 68. I mentioned before the 416 is too large for me to use inside um, the ISO box too, so I have been desperately excited to get this microphone and test it out. In terms of prices, uh, £300 from uh, um, Wex Music, I see the link below, or a uh, significantly cheaper in, in terms of currency exchange, uh, $349 from Amazon US on a perpetually mislabeled listing, which lists it as the three. It's actually the three S on the listing below. Last up, we have the uh, Audio Technica AT785. R, no, 875R, in fact, this little guy, um, about twice the weight of the Deity 3S, uh, even though it's only a little bit longer, that might even be more than that. Uh, if we take a look at the frequency response, the roll-off's pretty strong um, and, and starts higher than I would like, uh, likely to be an issue for my voice. Um, it is flat in the middle, but a bit wobbly at the top. Um, the self-noise is not published. So I've had to calculate it. It's not a difficult calculation, but it does rely on some assumptions. And the self-noise I come up with is 20 dBA, which is remarkably high. Um, yet even so, I, I got a noise floor of between minus 68 and minus 72 um, in these recordings, which is, is fairly astonishing. Um, and it does actually suggest that it's got a better directionality at low frequencies than uh, any of the other microphones I'm testing. I'm testing this microphone for two reasons, really. Firstly, it's been recommended to me. Um, and then the other reason is the price. It is £141 from Amazon UK and $189 from Amazon US. Um, and I got mine for um, £60 uh, from eBay, uh, second or third hand, and a great deal. So, let's start the comparisons. Cue dramatic music. Cue dramatic music. Q 
Cue dramatic music. Cue dramatic music. Or don't. We're not your mom. 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 Crunchazoids. 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 Now, imagine the perfect espresso. Now. Imagine the perfect espresso. Now, imagine the perfect espresso. Now, imagine the perfect espresso. Precision is not an option. 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 Talk to someone who gets it. 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 I don't think we should go in there. 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 I brought you a spoon. 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 Oh, it's a lovely day to be a me. Oh, it's a lovely day to be a me. Oh, it's a lovely day to be a me. Oh, it's a lovely day to be a me. I'm the bass magical dog. 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 All are safe under my protection. 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 Roll up. 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 You just got mud on my shoes. 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 I was never in the shadows. 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 Client said you'd be easy. 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 I'm going to count down from three and then... I'm going to count down from three and then... I'm going to count down from three and then... I'm going to count down from three and then... Kill them all kill them all kill them all kill them all she sells seashells by the seashore 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 peter piper picked a pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. They're right behind you. They're right behind you. They're right behind you. They're right behind you. Okay. So, what are my thoughts? So... As I said, the TLM-102 is my day-to-day -day microphone. I love it. It's a fantastic-sounding microphone. I've got very little I can criticize about it. Uh, I'm particularly a fan of the integrated pop filter. Um, and it's uh, of these four microphones, it's the one that I think sounds nicest when taking advantage of the proximity effect. Um, frankly, there's nothing I don't like. Um, all my bookings, uh, unless I'm traveling when I audition, come from this microphone, and it's great. The 416, um, 
I've got no better analogy than a clarinet. Um, when I was a teenager, my first wooden clarinet rather than a plastic clarinet just sounded amazing. Um, and I keep describing the MKH416 as wooden as a result, which is a terrible, terrible term to use. Um, but it just has that kind of luxurious tone. It, it, it sounds denser to me than the TLM-102. And the only thing I don't like is the size. Now, the 3S is just unbelievable. Uh, the lightweight, the size, the, the price of the, uh, compared to the 416, it's just, it's not that commonly found a microphone. It's quite new, the 3S, so it's not commonly found secondhand. Um, and therefore, you are somewhat comparing new 3Ss against the fractionally more expensive second or third hand uh, 416s, which is a not a particularly fair comparison to make because the sound of the 416 will usually win out. But if you want a new microphone, then uh, warranty and all, um, the 3S is an excellent choice. And I think it is very competitive in terms of sound with the 102 and the 416. Um, it really seemed to come into its own at the loudest examples, you know, the, the crunchazoids. Um, and notably, it was significantly less affected by the proximity effect than any other microphone in this video, or indeed in my next video. Um, I also thought it was particularly good at the airline. I was never in the shadows, uh, which is a reflection of the lack of boost in the sibilant registers. Um, on the other hand, uh, I do think it's weaker on the high end on certain sentences, such as imagine the perfect espresso, which is meant to maximise warmth, and then the uh, client said it'd be easy. So it, it's really on the deepest sentences. It tends to be a little weaker on the high end, making it sound a little distant. And then finally, the Audio-Technica AT875R. Um, what I liked, it was very warm when I wanted it to be warm. I love the warmth on Imagine the Perfect Espresso with this microphone. However, it is definitely harsher than any of the others. Um, it fell to pieces on... Uh, I don't think we should go in there. Which, for whatever reason, is the line that all these microphones, whatever I've tested, any type, any manufacturer, that is the sentence which causes things to go wrong. Um, and it sounds dreadful. I don't think we should go in there. Um, also, it is more sibilant than the other three microphones. Final thoughts? Well, first up, I love the TLM-102. I have never regretted getting it. Um, however, I would switch to the MKH-416 if it wasn't so long, and I almost certainly will move to it full-time when I upgrade my space and get a full-sized booth. If you can't get your hand on a second-hand MKH-416 or you want a new microphone, then the Deity S-Mic 3S is a solid, very, very solid contender, particularly if you have a size limit, like you're recording in an ISO box or a very small wardrobe. And then the AT-875R, it would be great for recording scratch audio on a boom. Um... Its directionality, even at the low registers, was phenomenal. Um, but frankly, it's not good enough for voiceover work, or at least my one isn't. I don't know if there are any problems with this particular microphone. It is not a new one. Um, but it, it really couldn't compare to the other three. That's that. Coming up in my next video, I will be comparing much more unusual microphones for voice work, the Sennheiser E614, the Sontronics STC-1 with the hypercardioid capsule, and most interestingly of all, I will be looking at the Loughton Audio LS308. I will see you next time.